I don't want to be married anymore. The words came in a calm, nonchalant voice across the room and hit me like a ton of bricks. As I looked up from gazing at my five-day-old son, the voice said, well, who's married forever? In shock, I replied, every fucking buddy, it's the fucking point of marriage. <laughs> On November 20th, 2008, it was officially done. As I walked out of the courtroom, which he didn't even bother to walk into, I walked to in life, into a life I never thought I'd have in a million years. Eight days before my 30th birthday, a five-month-old and a two-year-old, a single mother not having any idea what to do or how this works. I had no family in the area. I only stayed because we met and got married. And now the courts would never approve me leaving the state. I was stuck. I was fucked. I did my best, confused, feeling guilty about my boys. I let him back in several times, when I shouldn't have. But I did it for the boys, I thought. The devil gets me sometimes and reminds me that it, indeed it was awful for the boys. I could have stopped it, prevented it, but I didn't. It sticks in my head like a very bad dream. A warm summer day. I had, met, I had left to meet with his mother who had called and said she needed to talk to me. He was over so I told him I'd be right back. When I returned, he demanded to know where I had been and what the hell was going on. Not wanting to discuss it in front of the boys, I told him that we should wait. His anger started to boil and finally overflowed. I hurried the boys into the bedroom, shutting and locking the door. I could hear his yells growing louder and his footsteps growing closer. It happened so quick. I peered back at those two precious faces, now one in three, terror in their eyes. Before I could look back, I heard the snapping of wood as the door was busted in. I tried to shield my babies as I kicked and pushed him away. Finally, he stopped. It stopped, but it was really just beginning. Over the next few years from that moment, our paths had been changed forever. Vivid memories of shooing the boys upstairs as their father rang the doorbell over and over. Went and back throwing patio screaming, open the door, bitch. I tried to act calm so not to scare them. I'd watch them whenever the doorbell would ring after that day. They'd tense up and look at me. They still do that. I was something, it was something I couldn't shield them from, vocabulary a child should never hear. You bitch, you whore, you piece of shit. In fall of 2013, the best thing in my life happened. He moved to Las Vegas with his girlfriend and new baby. Finally, the nightmare would end, right? He was gone and he left, which meant I could finally leave too. But the journey would not be that simple. See, my ex-husband didn't just move. Their father didn't just move. My abuser moved. He was gone, but the damage, like the aftermath of a tornado, was almost beyond repair. My oldest, then a first grader, did not know what to do because the abuser was gone. He, he did the only thing he knew to do, and he became the abuser. Three to four times a week, I would find myself in a corner, curled up, being punched, kicked, bitten, scratched. It was heartbreaking to look in the face of a seven-year-old and see a monster you don't recognize, a monster you helped create. He would beat me up, then apologize, promise he'd never do it again, and tell me, stop crying, mommy. After he would settle down and go to bed, I would lay face down on his floor, pleading with God to help me, sobbing, but not too loud, so not to wake him up. And God finally did. I was able to get the boys and me into intense trauma counseling. On March 25th, 2014, I was granted sole custody and the permission to leave the state, a fresh start. While the journey was not a straight shot to lacrosse, I found myself here. And I can proudly say that my oldest doesn't hit me anymore. He's grown leaps and bounds. But much like the vicious cycle of poverty, it was too late. Like his older brother, when my youngest, now a second grader, get super mad or just hit the wall emotionally, I find myself again trying to keep him from hitting, kicking, biting, and scratching, lying on the floor sobbing and feeling hopeless. But I remind myself and I have to believe that every day is new and everyone deserves to be fought for. I believe that God gave me these precious boys, Nakai and Colin, because he knew that with his strength I could do this, no matter how shameful and exhausting it is. I am not naive that this is a simple journey, but I again trust that God's got this. 
He's already placed amazing people in our lives and we have all made progress. And while it's awful, it's sadly been worse. It is those days we sit and play Uno, play outside, or sit side by side watching and laughing at America's Funniest Home videos. Those are the days that give me hope. <laughs>